top goalkeepers in the SEC and in the country. Underway from Oxford. It's Ole Miss and Tennessee. Set the scene, Graham. It's cool. There's no hydration breaks tonight. This is a 45-minute half with no interruptions. Davis in the corner out of the reach of Mo O'Connor. In the low tonight in Oxford, it will dip down to under 50 degrees. Weather-wise, it is incredible. These two teams met in the SEC tournament a season ago in which Tennessee was victorious 3-2. This is rain on that back line. Drills one out of touch and into the student section in the house tonight to cheer on the Rebels. There you go. Be a lot of players here tonight thinking about that game that uh, ended five minutes from time with Tennessee scoring the winner for that 3-2 win down there on the coast. That will not have been forgotten. This is Taylor Radecki with a long throw in. Headed straight up in the air by Rain. And it will be picked up by Lindsey Romig, senior from Virginia. Look at the SEC standings. Both teams in the top seven. Ole Miss undefeated at 3-0. Tennessee 2-1 in the conference. This is a Tennessee team that won the SEC tournament a season ago. But Ian already out of the gate. Set pieces and especially throw wins. It's going to be very critical for both teams, especially Ole Miss in that situation where we just saw in Taylor Radecki. That's absolutely right. It's critical for the Tennessee defense to be able to handle those balls in the air. So the first 10 minutes or so, let's see how many times the ball goes in high and let's see how the Tennessee defense handles it. That was the first foul of the night against Ole Miss. So you're looking at the senior from New Jersey, Claudia Deposupol. Looks like she will handle this set piece, or it might be the other senior, Tara Katz from Montgomery, Alabama. Katz bluffs, Deepa Supel with a left foot, skies one in the six foot box, or their six yard box where it's headed out of touch, and Tennessee earns a corner kick already. So we watch referees to begin with, see where their line in the sand is drawn, and apparently. Referee this evening doesn't want to see too much pushing and he's prepared to punish it. That's where that free kick came from. Deep as Supel, game number 51 in her Lady Ball career and that in the arms of Ashley Orcus. Confident, Orcus, why not? She's been great this season. Her form has just got better and better and she was unchallenged there, which may not be uh, please the Tennessee coaches because you've got a goalkeeper on her line in the six yard box you've really got to put him under pressure try to see if you can cause a mistake obscure the flight of the ball at least this is Rain and Mo O'Connor Rain will take it all the way across midfield fires a shot it was ricocheted off of a passer Chadman Haggerty tried to slip one in to Montgomery here comes Tennessee. Laposter with a play defensively. Ends up all the way to Michael Ack. Well, this game's got off to a 100-mile-an-hour start. Yeah, a lot of times you'll see SEC games. It'll take a couple minutes. Here come the Lady Balls in the box, sent out. Not this one. It's yeah, it's definitely not this one. Goodness me. There's the head coach for the Ole Miss Rebels, Matt Mott, year number 13, sitting at 139 career victories. He's been to two Sweet 16s. You saw that stat a moment ago. This is the best 11-game start to the season in Ole Miss soccer history. Rooney plays it back to Romig. Romig, no stranger to playing against Ole Miss throughout the course of her career. Chadman Haggerty, collision, no call. She got tangled up with Fusco. This is Davis. 
Davis out wide, O'Connor to her left. There's the cross. Just a little bit too much on it. Ian, what do you think will be the keys and focal points for each team tonight? Well, <laughs> I said it earlier in the week, we, this could be the, uh, the immovable object and the unstoppable force. Uh, right now, I can't, there's, no, there's nothing to choose between these two midfield um, groups of players. Both, both are closing down, both are, are, are making sure their opponents don't have any room to work the ball, but a little bit of space here for Ole Miss. This is the freshman Montgomery. Finds Davis. Davis trying to create some space. Sends one inside the box. Tennessee is able to clear it out. The first test I think that Ole Miss has got to apply to see if Tennessee can, can pass his, uh, uh, aerial challenges. Well, here's Thomas. This is where she's dangerous. Thomas earns a corner kick, second one of the night for the Lady Vols. And on that left-hand side, Haley Cloud's going to have her hands full this evening. She's doing well so far, keeping a tight rein on her number two, Jada Thomas. She's going to have to do that all night because it won't take Thomas more than a yard to be able to get free. And uh, we saw in the, in the preliminary shots, she's lethal. Lofted in the six-yard box. Cleared out by Montgomery. This is Cax. Dangerous ball back to a passer. Can Montgomery get to it? Davis there as well for the Rebels. It is sent out of touch. That's the freshman Lauren Montgomery from North Carolina. Missed all of last year with an injury. Was red-shirted. She has started every game this season. We talked with Matt Mott earlier this week, and Lauren Montgomery just so consistent, just kind of been flying under the radar, but she's been playing at a very high level her first season playing at Ole Miss. Another long throw in for Ole Miss and Taylor Radecki. Here's Montgomery on the backside. Chapman Haggerty trying to track it down, sent out a touch. That was Montgomery that, or rather that was actually Mary Kay McGuire that fell down in the box. It was interesting watching the referee trying to get to coach to move, move half a yard, which he did. The referee was not impressed, was he, by that? He was close enough to see what, what happened. Another long throw in. Taylor Radecki, McGuire, closest one to it, but it's in the arms of Romig. Two or three of those long throws already testing this Tennessee defense. And, uh, yeah, they, they kind of got away with it. It went all the way through to the keeper without touching anybody, but the slightest deflection is going to spell trouble in that six-yard area off those long throw-ins. Rain calling forward receives it. Sophomore from Tampa, Florida, made the SEC freshman team a season ago. This is LaPasser. Angles it towards the corner. Rooney will stride to it, and the junior out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Game number 46 in her Tennessee career. Nicely brought down there by number 31, Mackenzie George. We know that Mackenzie George is going to be up there with Jada Thomas. The, uh, the twin strikers. But that's not all Tennessee has up front. They've got some, some depth in their strike force as well. We can expect to see um, on top of, of, of Thomas and McKenzie, we can see number 13, probably Huff getting up there. Mm -hmm. um, we can see Fusco having a go as well, number 11. And uh, oftentimes this season, they've, they've put together a four-person striking partnership. 
It's easy to see why Tennessee second in the conference with 33 gold scored, only behind Alabama. Alabama's got 35. O'Connor around midfield as it's taken away by Burdett. She was the SEC tournament MVP last year. However, Ole Miss has played pretty well this season as well. So this is really going to be, a, a, I think, a close game. Ramsey Davis couldn't quite get to it. There's Joe Kurt, first season as the head coach at Tennessee. Spent 15 seasons as the assistant coach for the Lady Vols. He was on staff for seven of those NCAA tournament appearances, including last year when Tennessee went 20-3. and three. Made it all the way to the third round of the NCAA tournament before falling to the Michigan Wolverines. Rain again, she'll toss it in. She played 90 minutes against Ole Miss a season ago. That ball actually almost ended up in the garbage can. That would have been impressive. <laughs> it would have been impressive. Yeah, there you go, right there. <laughs> it was halfway down and popped out. That ball was a missile. Player for Tennessee shaking up on that back line. Just mulling over that last comment about the, I mean, was, does that mean it was a garbage pass? <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Ole Miss. There's the cross. It's a pretty good one. O'Connor closes one to it, and Rain heads it out for the Lady Vols. And no, no blue shirt, shirt there to pick up the pieces. Tennessee with space here. This is Fusco, the sophomore, with a shot, and Orcus with a save for the Rebels. So that's Fusco, one of the, the, the four very capable strikers on this team. And, and they may or not be playing striker positions on the score sheet, but on the team sheet. But uh, wow, she made it well down that left hand side and got off a very good shot. Orcus was equal to it. Got a body behind it, didn't cause any trouble, but there was some venom behind that uh, behind that shot. Here's McGuire trying to turn the corner, poked away by Rennie. That's Katz. Katz is the one that took the shot a moment ago. Looked like she just had her wind knocked out of her. Tennessee again in the box. It's an out of touch and another corner kick on the way for the Lady Vols. What a play by this junior Nelson. Yeah, it was a good run. And also uh, sort of slight warning signs for Ole Miss in terms of the way that Tennessee broke from the back. Lots of space and uh, we're, we're not closed down. Able to string three or four passes together culminating in that run down the right-hand side. Third corner kick of the evening for Tennessee. Deepa Supel launches one in the box. It's going to angle almost all the way back to her. Nelson plays it back to her. Low line drive rocket headed out. Tennessee head coach Joe Kurt said he really wanted to see Tennessee play with a lot of competition and fight tonight. He wasn't pleased with it at Alabama. So he's got to be pleased with the start so far tonight. They have competed at a high level. And I will say that's typical Mo O'Connor defensive play. She made a mistake inside her own penalty area. She acknowledged it and she rectified it. Almost gave the ball away to, to uh, Thomas. You can see Ashley Orcas tried to hustle to pick it up to avoid a corner kick, but this will be the fourth corner kick of the night. For Tennessee, first one on this side of the pitch. Notice there's a Tennessee player standing right in front of Orcas now. Yeah, it's Thomas, the top goal scorer. Orcas punches, uh, punches it away momentarily. That was the difference from the first corner that she was able to simply catch it. And that time off the mark 
by DePasupal. Goal kick on the way for Orcus and Ole Miss. I'm not surprised the way the game started. These are two teams. It's like, sort of like two heavyweight boxers. You know that uh, they're both going to be giving a lot in this game. They both want to win it. Both sets of players are showing already lots of grit and determination and desire to win possession. And Ole Miss doing what it takes to get the ball safe in the 18-yard box. A couple of really long clearances. Not pretty, but effective. Sitting in the box again, there's Thomas. Thomas shot with the left foot. There's that back line for Ole Miss coming through. Mo O'Connor looks ahead, out of touch. The win for Ole Miss. Nice footwork, nice technical ability from O'Connor. So Ole Miss trying to do something they have not done in program history. That is defeat Tennessee at home. Last time the Rebels knocked off the Lady Balls, it was in Knoxville in 2015. That's off of rain. Here's a look at the series history. Tennessee leads it 17-4-2, including winning last year in the SEC Tournament semifinals. Two goals scored for Jada Thomas last year. And their long throw in on the way for Ole Miss and Taylor Radecki. This is what she specializes in. This is the equivalent of a corner kick for Ole Miss with Radecki. This time it's a short throw, and Tennessee was all over it. The referee was looking but was not interested. Interesting decision or lack thereof. From the referee. This is Laposser and George. This will be a fun matchup to watch. Laposser sends one out of touch. What's going to be different for Ole Miss tonight is the pace of the game. It's it's turned it up a notch from what they've been used to this season. Not as much time on the ball. Got to get the ball under control very quickly and got to think equally as quickly. That pass intercepted by Katz. Approaching the midway point of this first half. So for Tennessee, three shots. Ole Miss with one. This is a Tennessee team that has played an absolutely brutal schedule so far this season. They've already played at North Carolina. That was a season opener. They have played Duke as well. There's an opportunity for Ole Miss. This is Davis. Davis, she'll play it back to Montgomery. Lost one looking for McGuire. Over the head of McGuire. Here's Mister. It's her birthday today. Mister. Shot deflected. Back in the box. Ramsey Davis heads one out of touch. This will well, be a goal kick for Tennessee. Certainly in terms of pace, um, Ole Miss has got the edge. And uh, Ramsey Davis went through there as if it was a 100-yard sprint. She would have taken gold, but um, unfortunately got, got possession of the ball but was not able to do anything with it afterwards. There's Lindsay Romick, game number 58 of her career. She's already been named the SEC Defensive Player of the Week this season, earlier this month. All right, back to Romick. Good ball to Deepa's, Deepa's Supel. That was an excellent ball. When you know it drops at your foot just on your instep like that without you having to move, that is a great pass. Fusco. Lady Vols again. That's Burdett. Burdett angles it in the corner. Deepa Supel. There's the cross for Deepa Supel. And Chapman Haggerty clears it out for Ole Miss. So 
So Tennessee, four corner kicks so far in this first half. Lady Vols average seven per match. And again, that is Jada Thomas standing in front of Ashley Orcas in the goal. Shots, easy catch made for Orcas. Yep, it was a neither really a shot nor a, nor a chip pass. You can see the leg from Ashley Orcas. She can really yes, she can. boom it down on the other side of the pitch. Rain intercepts the pass. Trying to find George out of her reach. This is LaPasser. <laughs> Chapman Haggerty making her third consecutive start for the Gonzaga transfer. Here's Romig. Chapman Haggerty finds McGuire. McGuire try to play it back to O'Connor. Tennessee prepared for it. Posser falls down. And did very well. Almost lost possession and claimed possession back even while she was on the ground. These are two teams that don't really have a lot of fouls. Tennessee has the fewest fouls in the SEC, so you're really not going to have a lot of whistles. There's only been one so far tonight. And if you've got a referee that's content to be invisible in the game and just let the game go on and remains in control, that's good for the players. Ashley Orcas, she will pick it up. Orcas, her career started at Tennessee. Only played in four games for the Lady Vols. Pasula plays it forward. This is George. George being pursued from behind by Chapman Haggerty. George Sr. from California plays it back. Out of touch. It'll be a throw in for Tennessee and Rain. Impression so far as the first half yes. winds on. It's kind of chess like it. You know, I can see Ole Miss's game plan, which is they're trying to come out and, and um, put Tennessee under pressure. Tennessee works the ball out of the back well. They're playing triangles nicely out of the back, which is uh, uh, good soccer basics. There's really not much to choose, is there, at the moment between these two teams? And we've seen it a lot this season where the games have been nil-nil going into getting towards halftime. We said, well, really, you know, the game needs a goal. And there's nothing like a goal to, to, to break these, these deadlocks open, these midfield, these midfield battles. A goal will force one team to come out and, and, uh, and, and maybe take a few more risks. Davis has it taken away by Deepa Supel. Deepa Supel trying to find George. George can't get to it. It'll be collected by Ashley Orcas. Just a little too much on that one. And Ashley Orcas can read those. She's very, uh, she's very much in command of that 18-yard area with incoming balls. She's got a very good eye for for depth, depth of field, knowing when to come, when not to come. This is Katz 
Senior from Montgomery, Alabama. Game number 65 of her Tennessee career. Ole Miss searching for Mary Kate McGuire. Right now what I see is the difference between the two teams, Graham, is that on the, on the build-up, Tennessee appears to be able to put more players in front of the ball with their back to their opponent's goal. So they're attacking in numbers. Ole Miss is uh, getting it in midfield and starting their attacks from the midfield. But when they get up into the final third of the field, there's really just one player or maybe maybe two, and they're a long way from each other. And so I think right now Tennessee just edging it. But it's not about possession. It's about goals. These are two teams that scored lots of them. 33 for Tennessee. Ole Miss sitting at 25. Rain will take it herself. The sophomore from Tampa is fouled by Montgomery. Yeah, I think oftentimes the crowd will see differently from the referee, and I have to agree. I think that that looked more like a fall than an offense. It's possible we missed it from up here. The referee was in a good position to see, but didn't appear to be any contact to me. Here's a look at it. I'm looking at... See, I think that's a slip. I don't think that's a foul at all. I'm sorry, ref. We're going to have to differ on that one. Deepa Sula angles it in the corner. This is George and Montgomery. Rather, that's Lapasser. Lapasser there for Ole Miss. And then, of course, within 20 seconds, <laughs> there's a, a free kick to Ole Miss. So you do wonder what goes on in the mind of a referee. I'll look around the SEC teams ranked in the top 25. Alabama at the top. They're ranked fifth. Ole Miss hitting at number 13. Mississippi State ranked 21st. That's the highest ranking in program history for the Bulldogs. Can McGuire get to it? Collected by Romick. That's a good break from Ole Miss. It's probably the most dangerous break so far. Physical play there between Rain and O'Connor. Nothing new for Mo O'Connor though. Uh, apart from the course from, uh, from Mo O'Connor. That's 100% every single time. All, all ball, fortunately for O'Connor. Good ball in the box. Here's Thomas. Thomas leads the conference with nine goals. She puts one in, and it's cleared out by Ole Miss. It was sent at the very top of that six-yard box, and Ole Miss was ready for it. Mm -hmm. Tennessee looking to push again, trying to find George. Laposser plays it forward. Rain there for the Lady Vols. Yes, it's dangerous to uh, to give Thomas any room at all, even to try to let the ball run out of play for a goal kick, and uh, she will hurt you. She will she will close you down and regain possession. Another look at the last sequence there. There she is, just gets her leg in, and fortunately for Ole Miss, there were no orange shirts on the edge of the six uh, yard line. That's McKenzie territory, and fortunately for Ole Miss. Nobody there this time. That was Michael Lack, right place, right time. We have our first substitutions. Mullaney in for the Rebels, the freshman from Collierville, Tennessee. She's played in every match this season. Stella Downing enters for Mo O'Connor. Downing, a junior from Vancouver, Canada. which has been a consistent change. O'Connor comes, comes out, Downing comes on. Players of, of similar, similar effort, which is sort of slightly off the charts. This is George. George Thomas to her right instead slips one to Deepasula. Deepasula 
Finds Thomas, top of the box. Chadman Haggerty trying to clear it out. That shot deflected. Here's another one that misses for Tennessee. That was Fusco with a really good look. Yeah, that was a good chance for Tennessee. Certainly, Ashley Orcus was well positioned. Not sure if she got anywhere near this with a touch. No, not even close. But I uh, have to say, from a Tennessee standpoint, to be in that position and not to put the ball on target is probably not what coach is looking for. So look at how many players on the pitch tonight on this watch list. Ashley Orcus for Ole Miss and then Huff, George and Thomas for Tennessee. Sydney Hennessy is the first substitution tonight for Tennessee. Simmons in as well. Molly Thompson, the LSU transfer, now in for the Rebels. We know Ole Miss has got depth off the bench when Coach Mock can play 20 players in a game, which he did last weekend. Um, they are proven. Tennessee again, that's Fusco. She had the shot a moment ago, trying to find Simmons with fresh legs. Laposser matched up with her. This is Laposser taken away by Simmons. Simmons trying to create space. Nobody really in the area before it's eventually cleared out by Ole Miss. And there's a little bit of a warning sign for Ole Miss. That's twice now. Um, trying to let the ball run out of play. Twice they've been caught. Twice they've been dispossessed in their own 18-yard area. And uh, that is fortunate that they haven't had to pay a price at the moment. And and then, so sorry, Graham, talking about depth of, of mm -hmm. squad, Tennessee pulls on a, a substitute, happens to be a Jamaican international. So I think they may say they've got depth too. <laughs> right. That's Cameron Simmons, the freshman. She's from Virginia. And Ian, all she did was score two goals last game against Kentucky on the road. <laughs> yeah. That is uh, some good people sitting on the bench. Zalewski checked in a moment ago as well for Tennessee. Senior from Ohio. So approaching the final 10 minutes. Here's Burdett. Trying to split the defenders. Burdett out of touch. This will be a goal kick, or rather a corner kick for Tennessee. They're six. So there you go, Cameron Simmons with the Jamaican national team along with Giselle Washington. Washington a junior from Brookhaven, Georgia. Missed all of last year with an injury. They have bright futures for the Lady Vols. So here we go. Another corner kick. Sent up in the air. The header off the mark. Kept alive, though. And there is the whistle for a goal kick for Ole Miss. There's a free header. Coach Mott would have noticed that and probably have a word at half time. But again, no harm done for Ole Miss. So Ashley Yorkus. Had two saves last year against Tennessee. Simmons again. That time it'll be a foul. Ole Miss, Just the first one tonight. Ole Miss needs to be very careful across that back four in terms of trying to play just a little bit too smart, um, a little bit too intricate. Sometimes that's necessary and sometimes it's absolutely dangerous when you know You've got players of this caliber that are going to be closing you down so quickly. You saw Taylor Radecki and Ashley Orcas. What are teammates for, right? Hey, will you please tie my shoe? Yeah. <laughs> when you're wearing those big gloves. Oh, yeah. Tying it makes the shoe it, lace, makes uh, it challenging. Yeah. Lucy Green checks in for the Rebels. The junior out of Meridian, Mississippi, played 58 minutes against Tennessee a season ago.
Throw in for Laposser. Approaching the final 10 minutes in what's been an entertaining first half. Here's a look at Saturday's Week 5 SEC Network football lineup. Number 17, Texas A&M takes on Mississippi State at 4 Eastern, 3 Central, and at 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central. Number 1, Georgia is in Columbia squaring off against Missouri in our SEC Saturday night matchup. Both games are also available on the ESPN app. Radecki lofts one in the box. Yeah, it's sort of mishit from uh, Taylor Radecki. She she got it back from the throw-in, took it on the half volley, but sort of sliced it a little bit, so really no danger from that. And coming towards the end of the first half, I have to say that Tennessee seems to have got the upper hand for the last 10 or 15 minutes or so. What do you attribute that to? I think they've they've sort of grounded out in the middle of the field, and uh, they they've uh, yeah, ball goes out for a goal kick. They've 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 played the better soccer. They've they've played the better movement of the ball and movement off the ball, and uh, and found players and been able to create a little bit of space. Ole Miss hasn't quite found the space that the orange shirts have and consequently haven't been able to move the ball forward as, as dangerously. Here we've got overlapping players, players left over, players in space. That's what you need when you're in possession. Zaluski with a cross, tapped out by Orcus. This is Rain and Downing, and we have a whistle and a foul on Stella Downing. Downing just... Just a little bit of a bite. There's the cross. There comes Orcus. Can't catch it. Goes with the punch. It's a good punch. Clears the lines. Two-fisted. Good goalkeeping. Lawson Rennie, junior from Cincinnati, Ohio, handles this set piece. There's Burdett. Burdett's played every second so far in this first half. See the blue passes not quite linking up with each other. Here's a, uh, this is Fusco. Fusco try to utilize the left foot, deflected. And this is Stella Downing with a lot of room. She's got Thompson to her left. Thompson calling for it. Downing still going. By the time Stella Downing was approaching the 18-yard line, there were six orange shirts behind the ball, not counting the goalkeeper. Thompson. Can't quite get to it. It'll be picked up by Romig. Romig had a career-high nine saves earlier this season against Alabama. That was just eight days ago against a very good Alabama team, which is ranked the highest in the conference. Just an observation there, which is not – it's just interesting to me that the referee would – gesture to a goalkeeper to hurry up with the ball when there's a rule in the book to say that goalkeepers shall not hold the ball for too long and uh, the referee's quite within his rights to, to punish and use the rule book and chose not to and uh, some could say is interfering or encouraging a player to, to play differently from how she would normally play. time miscommunication that's Radecki that sends one out of touch and we have a substitution for each team the freshman Alex Schoenstatt from Washington enters for Ole Miss 
There's Sherwood's dad in Washington, who we touched on a moment ago, is now in for Tennessee, the junior from Brookhaven, Georgia, a member of the Jamaican national team. Under five minutes remaining in the first half. I'd say it's been a technical half, Graham. It's, it's, these these games come in all shapes and sizes and personalities. This one's been the art of how to move the ball around in your own third and, and, and build on it. Protect you with a header. Ole Miss hasn't defended badly two or three times where they've they've tried to rest on their laurels when probably not wise to do that but no clear cut chances for Tennessee so far and 0-0 uh, zero, zero, probably a fair result a fair score at this time of the game there's that tenacity of downing closing the opponent down not letting the pass get out. That's the spirit that, that needs to permeate through this Ole Miss team. There's the freshman from Cary, Illinois, Jenna Stayart in for the first time, her ninth appearance this season. Tennessee has only been tied at halftime once this season. They won that match. This is unfamiliar territory for the Lady Vols. Ashley Orcus ranges over, gets to it. And I think where, where Coach Mott is going to be pleased with his team when he gets them in the dressing room is to say, look, you know, you're working hard. You're doing your best to close these guys down. It's a very large field. There's lots of space out there. Mm-hmm. And right now, Tennessee's working hard to find the, the space that they are managing to use. But it's a big field to try to close all players down all the time. And if this match is tied at halftime, Ole Miss, no strangers to being tied at the break. 4-0-2 this season when tied at the break. Zalewski takes it to the corner. I think that's an Ole Miss throw in. And it will be. And that's what the referee saw as well. And another substitution. Sophomore Riley Friesen from Athens, Georgia is in. William and Mary transferred. Third team all conference selection in the CAA. And has had a good season this so far this season. Playing just in front of the back four. She's the seventh different substitution in this first half for Ole Miss. That's Downing that fell down again, whether that was actually Thompson. That's out of touch, 90 seconds to go. Referee looked at his assistant to see if the assistant thought it was worth a foul. It was a, uh, a nicely disguised um, easing off the ball, let's just put it that way. Neither official thought it was worth an offense. And there's one. That'll be the third one tonight on Tennessee. One minute remaining in the first half in Oxford. In a crucial SEC showdown between Ole Miss and Tennessee. Rebels trying to knock off Tennessee for the first time in program history in Oxford. Tennessee has won the last four in this series. How does Ole Miss want to handle this? He will send him back to Orcus. There's Rain. Rain matched up with Thompson. 
Washington and Downing. Washington plays it forward. Ten seconds to go. Decky with a header, and this should take us to halftime, and it will. First half in the books in Oxford. Ole Miss nil, Tennessee nil. Well, we thought this would be a fantastic matchup, and so far it has not disappointed as we are about to be joined by Ole Miss head coach Matt Mott. What is a busy weekend in Oxford? It's homecoming weekend. Just touched on it a moment ago. Ole Miss taking on Kentucky on the gridiron across campus. But tonight it has been Ole Miss and Tennessee on the pitch. A series in which Tennessee has won the last four. Ole Miss looking for their first win against Tennessee since 2015. Looking for program win number one against Tennessee in Oxford. So here we go. Ian, what will be the things that you look forward to here huh? in the second half? Some goals, first of all. <laughs> uh, second thing is I'm listening to, uh, to to what Coach Kurt said about not having as many players up front as he would like. But what he's done is he's put six across the back for defending, which makes it difficult to attack in force. Let's see how they change that, see if they turn it upside down. If they put more people forward, will that allow Ole Miss to break through on their attacks? It was Nelson that played it forward, out of touch. Throw in for Ole Miss. Ball 
This is Rain. She'll track it down. Rain has played every single second so far tonight. She's done that five times this season. Mister comes up with it, celebrating her birthday today. Interesting and, and, and probably good for the crowd all round. Coach Kurt's attitude seems to be that he doesn't want to go home tonight with a, with a draw. That uh, he would really like to break this deadlock. But I also know that Taylor Radecki would with this long throw in as well. So here she goes. Another long throw in for Radecki. In the box, the header, not much on it. There's a long distance shot, bounces in the arms of Romick. Difficult one to take. The ball was bouncing high. Price the Posse came in, tried to get over the top of it. Couldn't quite get on top of that one, but she managed to keep it down, but, but no real force behind it. Well, Posser does have the first goal of her career score this season, as you see the resume for Romig. Six in program history and career saves, including a career best nine against Alabama last week. Looking at Haley Cloud. Cloud started the last two. She was taken out of the starting lineup at Kentucky. She still played a ton this season as Chapman Haggerty plays it back to Orcus. That's right, she did, and she still played a, a, a lot in the Kentucky game as well. And uh, significant minutes for her in terms of what happened while she was on the field. So it just goes to show that if you don't start, doesn't mean you don't can't get a lot of minutes in the game. This is Huff. Didn't get much on that cross. Nelson, skies one. The cross over the head of Thomas. Thomas never really left her feet. Posser, she'll toss it in. The junior out of Madison, Mississippi, played at Jackson Prep. She has played every single second 36 times in her career. Just underway in the second half between Ole Miss and Tennessee. Tennessee team that won the SEC tournament last year. They were picked preseason first coming into this season. You see the preseason poll there. Action in the box and a shot, and it's way over the goal. Wow, one of the best looks of the night for Tennessee. Well, you make your own luck in this game. Almost gave away possession on the halfway line. Got possession back, header was off target. Deflected back to her, her left foot. Couldn't get over it. Ball goes over the bar. Really got to put that one on target from there. You really do. The goal was just gaping in front of her and she yeah. just couldn't get her knee over it. That was Taylor Huff, the SEC Freshman of the Year last year. Radecki. They're the kind of chances that sometimes can come back to haunt you. It's a good ball from Radecki. He's able to get it to Davis. Davis into the box. Nobody there in favor of Ole Miss. See, that's where Mo O'Connor is so valuable. There's putting a, the, uh, the right fullback under pressure. And uh, instead of a great pass up the right side, out of defense, it, it slices. Slices off her foot and out for a throw in for Ole Miss. That's what that's what putting players under pressure can do. Radecki 
throw in. Chapman Haggerty can't get to it. Here comes Tennessee. LaPasser has other ideas, though, for the Rebels. Working against Fusco. Fusco takes it away. And LaPasser with a foul. No complaints on that one, I think, from LaPasser. Just the fourth foul tonight against the Rebels. This is the sophomore, Claire Rain, made the SEC freshman team last year. Played back to Orcus. Low line drive. And Tennessee would do the same thing. A lot of space in the middle of the pitch there. And not typical coming out of defense from Tennessee. There was a lot of space, as you said, and yet they gave that ball away quite easily. But didn't take them long to win it back again. So it's deep as Sula. Trying to slip one into Thomas. As that attack was was forming, you could see that there were four orange shirts on the edge of the Ole Miss 18-yard area, which is confirmation of, of what Coach Kurt said at halftime in terms of wanting to push more people up front. Uh, finds Thomas, long distance shot, and a leaping save by Ashley Orcus. Right, here we go. Another right-footed shot drilled in. That was a more than the average save from Ashley Orcus. That was, that was traveling. That was a good shot and a very good save. She had one very similar against the Florida Gators. The only difference is she made the catch. She punched it away against the Florida Gators and Ole Miss with an opportunity. Romig comes up with it. She did, and there's an interesting little comparison there between two goalkeepers. Shot coming into Romig there, and I'm um, not sure if we will get to see a replay on that one, but Romig did not hold it. It sort of um, it slipped out of her grasp. There's nobody there to take advantage of it, but... Ashley Orcus, the ball stuck to her gloves like like glue. Deepa Supel again, great entry pass that is eventually cleared out by Ole Miss. Yeah, so this is McGuire. And it comes and it's just not quite not quite grabbed at the first at the first opportunity. What that tells me is, from, from Coach Mott's point of view, is, all right, guys, you, you've got to have a go. Even if it's from 20, 25 yards, test the goalkeeper. That's what I love about this game, though, Graham. You've got players that want to get a shot off from, from 18, 20 yards, and then you've got whole coaching sessions designed to, to shut strikers down so they don't even get the, the space to take the shot. This is George, George. Again looking for Thomas. Tennessee has doubled up Ole Miss tonight as far as shots go. George will skip this one to Ashley Orcus. Yeah, a nice flick on. But Nobody there to get on the end of it, except, of course, Ashley Orcus. Both teams coming off of a road victory. Ashley Orcus lunges for it. Such a veteran player. The build-up was, let's just say, ragged. 
was almost like nobody wanted it and uh, Orcus said okay I will come out and I'll be happy to get it see what she's done this season two-time first-team SEC selection Maybe a little amped up to face her former team. Joe Kirk did tell us he knew how talented she was. Here's another long distance shot. Gobbled up by Ashley Orcus again. Yeah, I wonder if that's come through from the coaches at half time, which is to say, look, you know, first 45 minutes, we tried to get in a little too close, both of us, both, co both sets of coaches. And uh, why don't we just try some long range efforts and see what happens. And McGuire get to it. McGuire and Rain. Rain wins that battle. And that's what Coach Mott was talking about at halftime is giving away needless, needless passes, not under pressure. This is Huff in the box to George. Sliding effort to kick it out of touch. This will be a corner kick on the way for Tennessee. That was Michael Ack with a defensive play for the Rebels. So you see Michael Ack took the ball by the horns there and, and just letting the ball run and see what happens. You just can't do that in the six-yard box, and that's what Michael Ack decides is that, okay, I'm going to give a corner away. It's okay, but I've got to snuff out this danger right now. Deepa Supal has handled the majority of the corner kicks tonight. And again, George and Thomas standing in front of the goal for Tennessee. Here we go. Catch made by Orcus. Thomas in the area. The ball just whizzed right over her head. Which is, which is how it should be if there's no interference and you've got a player standing in front of you. She's not coming off a run. The height that you generate from your jump as a striker is going to be limited if you're not coming off a run-up. And Ashley Orcus has got, well, what? Two foot advantage when she puts her arms in the air. Orcus tonight, four saves. Tennessee again pushing. This is Huff, and Orcus can't come up with it cleanly, but she does get to it. Look at the reaction from Thomas. Jada Thomas is saying, you got to be kidding me. Five saves now for Ashley Orcus. And she, she sees the replay, she'll say, you got to be kidding me again. Look at the rebound straight to her, straight back into Orcus's hand. I think we just have to put that one down for, for one player a little bit of bad luck and for another player a little bit of good luck. So six saves now for Ashley Orcus. That is a new season high. Her previous was five. She did that twice. So Tennessee definitely knocking on the door in the second half. Tennessee with 11 shots tonight. Six of those have been on goal. Fusco, great pass to Nelson. Nelson will take it inside. Shot with the left foot, way off the mark. Goal kick upcoming for Orcus and Ole Miss. Unfortunate for Nelson that she couldn't get her left foot around that one and curl it in at the far post. But what happened to the Ole Miss defense was that the whole defense got drawn into the center of the field and out to that far side. Nobody was picking up the right winger on the far post at the back here. Could have been costly. Lucy Green and Riley Friesen return for Ole Miss. Friesen only played two minutes in the first half. Green played 11. So Coach Mott trying to shake up that back line of his defense with Tennessee threatening several times already in the second half. That's past George. This is Taylor Radecki. Graze the top of the head of Mo O'Connor. She hustles for it. This is what she does, trying to stick with it. Will this be a yellow card? Murphy thought it was a little aggressive, but uh, it's just having a quiet word.
Just a little clip from the back. Re every referee's gonna gonna give that one. I'm afraid Mo uh, kind of came in a bit uh, a little bit too aggressively around the ankles. A different angle. Yep. This is McGuire. She'll roll it to Laposser. Ole Miss will earn a throw in, which will be Taylor Radecki time. More substitutions. Brindlin Mullaney enters for the Rebels. She played 11 minutes in the first half, and Tennessee will put in three new players. Simmons and Washington return. So one thing to monitor, Ian, Jada Thomas is no longer on the pitch. Neither is Fusco. Those are two of their top playmakers up top. The win for Radecki. It'll go right back to her. There's a rocket over the head of everybody and out of touch. Amazing cross driven in just over head height. A little too high for everybody. But if that cross had been uh, 18 inches lower, it could have spelled real danger for Tennessee. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with... Um, with Thomas sitting on the bench for a few minutes. See if that really does change change much. Tennessee been really sort of turning the screw the last five or ten minutes in terms of possession and, and pushing into the Ole Miss third. Anna Zalewski enters as well. She played 14 minutes in the first half. It seems like both head coaches, they're playing for the final stretch, making sure some of their top playmakers have a chance to rest and regroup for a little bit at least. That's out of touch, just out of the reach of the sophomore, Hennessy, who just checked in. Not a bad pass at all, just a little too heavy. Sure, that ball even came in to play, but looks like it may have done. Cats will toss it in. Game number 65 of her Tennessee career. Nifty move by Hennessy. Cleared out by Michael Act. That's again on the throw in. This is George, left foot, rocket, out of touch. Goal kick on the way for the Rebels. From a defensive point of view, you got a player that can turn you like that. And um, it's, it's, really, it's really not something that, um, that Coach Mock wants to really just sit there and, 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 and you got to bark at your defenders occasionally because that was uh, unacceptable from a defensive point of view to have a player turn like that and then get a shot off. Stella Downing and Molly Thompson return. They both played 15 minutes in the first half. Well, this, Ian, this is an Ole Miss defense that has only allowed three goals the entire season, but Coach Mont shaking things up in the second half with his back line. Yeah. And, and it's not surprising, really, because we talked about it before the game even started, that, that this team tonight from Tennessee is a strong team and probably the strongest group Ole Miss have faced this season, home or away. And a big opportunity on the way for the Lady Balls after Zalewski earns a corner kick, which will be the eighth one of the night. Ole Miss still doesn't have a single corner kick. So this is Zalewski using the left foot with a corner kick. Front post, slot of traffic in the area. Will it be another corner kick? Think it will right. indeed. I think you're right. Yep. There's some Ole Miss baseball players in the building tonight. T.J. McCants. Corner kick. 
Here we go. Orcus juggling effort falls down, but this will be a foul on Tennessee. Whenever you've, you've got a crowded six yard area and the goalkeeper's trying to grab the ball and gets pushed, most referees are going to give that fairly quickly, which this one did. There's Joe Kurt. He was a lot of fun to visit with this week. He said it was a quick process. It took seven days for him to be named the head coach at Tennessee. Orcus will pick it up off the bounce. So Joe Kurt, he's not the only new head coach in the conference. Joins this group, Georgia, Kentucky, Florida Gators, Samantha Bohan. He made the trip to Oxford last week. So four new head coaches in the SEC, but he's no stranger to the SEC. Remember, he spent 15 years on staff for Tennessee, and the Lady Vols won a bunch of games during that stretch. George trying to find Simmons. Radecki plays it back to Orcus. Orcus a season high in saves tonight. She's got six. More contact taken away, this time by Taylor Huff. Sophomore from Ohio plays it forward, charging for it. This is George, gets to it, the cross. And Ole Miss survives, wow. By the skin of their teeth. This is Rain, sends one towards the top of that 18 yard box. Simmons saying, hey, it hit a hand, no she whistle. She was trying for it, made the appeal. Yeah, this one comes in and it's just not dealt with again and a little bit of a push maybe, but not sure a referee's ever gonna give that in the six yard area, but. Fortunately for, for Ole Miss and unfortunately for Tennessee, nothing came of it. Here's Simmons trying to create space and Ashley Orcas comes up with it and again, veteran play, waits for it before she bends down to collect it. Anytime you can get Simmons to run an extra six or seven yards, you take it if you can. Looks like Jada Thomas getting ready to come back in for Tennessee. Huff angles one towards the corner, trying to find Zalewski. And another opportunity on the way for the Lady Vols. This will be the 10th corner kick tonight for Tennessee, and they average seven per match. An observation from, from here is that almost doesn't appear to be doesn't appear to be comfortable on the ball. They don't they don't look relaxed. They don't look like they want to keep it and, uh, and and run with it. It's almost like we, I've got it. I've got to get rid of it as quickly as possible. So Thomas back in tenth corner kick of the night for Tennessee. Zalewski sends one right to Laposser. Laposser has it taken away though by Huff. Huff lets one go from distance. Thomas in the area. Simmons collides with an Ole Miss Rebel who's slow to get up in the box. Foul on Tennessee. Yeah, you'll be glad to see everybody get up on their feet after that one. That's All's Fortenberry. Well. Yeah, just got legs taken from under her as she was coming down. And uh, that was the unfortunate part of that, right on the, the base of the spine, but all is well. Thankfully for having a little bit of water sprinkled on the field before the game started. Soften things up a little bit. Because we haven't seen rain here for a while. 
And part of that was Ole Miss played at UCF this season, and UCF did that prior to the game. And Matt Mott said, "You know what? That's a that's a pretty good idea. We should we should probably do that in Oxford." Here, here's Thomas again, and that one hit the back of an Ole Miss Rebel again, almost dangerously close to another handball. Lots of noise from the Tennessee group below us, and and. Uh, if it had happened the other way around, there'd have been lots of noise from the Ole Miss fans, but the hand was in, I think the referee's thinking, a, a, a natural position down by a side. But I don't know about handball anymore. I've seen those given. And I've seen them w waved away, so who knows? Chapman Haggerty will send one all the way back to Lindsay Romick. What do you think would be the keys down the stretch here for each team? Well, one for Ole Miss is that they've got to test Romig. They're not going to do anything if they can't get into that 18-yard uh, box and try to, to push some of these orange shirts back into defense. It's come to pass exactly as Coach Kurt had described it at halftime. He's pushing more people forward, and he's playing more of this game in, in Ole Miss's half in the second half. Ole Miss, it'd be nice to see their players have a little confidence to get on the ball, play some short passes, try to work their way into Tennessee's third of the field and take a strike on goal. But right now, heavily heavily um, in, in favour of Tennessee. They seem to be doing the lion's share of the attacking. And, as we've seen, some pretty close attempts on goal that maybe Fortune, uh, uh, fortune favoured Ole Miss when you thought there was no way the ball would stay out. This is Taylor Adecki again with a long throw in. But you are right, Tennessee, 13 shots tonight. Ole Miss only has four. It's out of touch. Tennessee will throw it in. Deepa Supol returns, the senior from New Jersey. These are two teams that are accustomed to scoring a lot of goals. Tennessee has only played in one game this season in which they did not score a goal, and that was their season opener at North Carolina. It's only happened twice to Ole Miss at Sanford in what Matt Mott said was the hottest game that he's ever been a part of, and then a Southern Miss game in which Ole Miss had about five shots hit the crossbar. Yeah, there was a lot of woodwork in that game. And in the last uh, the last seven games for, for Tennessee, they've put 30 goals in. So. And again, Joe Kirk said he really wanted to see his team compete and fight. And they have definitely done that from the get-go tonight. They have. This is Hennessy. Finds Simmons with a shot, and Orcus kind of called asleep a little bit. Can't come up with it, but it is a goal kick. Yeah, that's the opportunism of these players. Just get, flick the ball up, turn. It was a half chance, that's all it was. Flips it up, gets it on the volley, off the end of her toe. Could have gone in, could have surprised Orcus. Just roll the dice as a striker. I mean, Orcus didn't know where the ball go was going any more than the striker did. But have a go and see what happens. There's a foul on Tennessee and Simmons. Tennessee hardly ever gets a yellow card. They only have four the entire season. That was a lengthy conversation with Cameron Simmons. Marcus again booms one towards the top of the box, headed out by Washington. Kept alive, Chadman Haggerty trying to find Jenna Kemp. Kemp has it taken away by Huff. Huff has Simmons to her right, Taylor, or rather Thomas to her left, trying to get it to Thomas. And Orcus again makes a lunging effort. 
And again, it has to be said that the, the, the play was more impressive from the orange shirts coming out there attacking just with two players that time and still still getting close to the 18 yard area before they lost possession so the confidence level is with Tennessee at the moment here's an opportunity for Ole Miss this is Stella Downing Downing falls in the box no whistle crowd one at one the Ole Miss crowd did Matt Mott Looking at him on the Ole Miss sideline, no emotion after that last sequence. I think the uh, the crowd was putting the, uh, the referee under a little bit of pressure. Nothing wrong with that. That's what home crowds are for. I know the referee had a good hard look at it. That ball gets through all the way to Thompson. Thompson slams on the rakes, plays it back. This is Davis from distance. Really good ball towards the post. There's a shot by Downing. Ricocheted out of there. That was one of the better looks tonight. Four Ole Miss, just the fifth shot overall. Maybe that's a confidence builder for Ole Miss because coming into this game, statistically, they're on a par with, with Tennessee. This ball comes into the back post, doesn't get dealt with. Good strike, good defending, have to say. I think that was Katz. If Katz, it is Katz. If she does not, if she's not in that position, that is a goal for the Rebels there. Absolutely. Good defending. This is the first corner kick of the night for Ole Miss. Taylor Radecki, she will handle it. She has eight assists this season. That is a career high. A little more spirit in the Ole Miss crowd tonight now. Headed out to LaPosser. LaPosser lets it go, keeps it on the ground. McGuire there for the Rebels. McGuire shot deflected. Chapman Haggerty, one of the closest one to it. O'Connor slips and falls. And then Rain says, enough with this. Let me get rid of it. And she does out of touch. Well, there's some excitement up the other end. Interesting stuff. It could have gone anywhere. And uh, in the end, broke for Tennessee. Tennessee again on the move. How do they want to play this? Good ball to Nelson. Nelson plays it back. This is Huff. Huff, a missile punched away. Thomas is there. Thomas top of the box. Pass just off the mark a little bit, which allows Ole Miss to get rid of it. Exciting stuff for this crowd. They sat through some, some quiet moments tonight. Game seems to have come to life a bit in the last 10 minutes. Deep Asula, skies on Thomas, the header, and it's in for Tennessee. What a ball in a box. That is the 10th goal scored this season for Jada Thomas. Ole Miss knew she was a threat coming into this game, and she's been a threat most of the time on the ground with her feet. This time she finds a little room in the air, gets the header in. It's just more than... More than Ashley Orcas can handle. Comes to her. Nods it in on that far post. A good header, has to be said. A difficult one for Orcas to get to. A difficult one for any goalkeeper to get to. And that's just about been the difference tonight. Look at how many goals. That's now 35 goals scored for Jada Thomas. And she's done it in just 49 games now. She has been a difference maker. She is definitely on track to score the most goals in program history. This is a foul against Ole Miss. Interesting. Interesting uh, watching that on the replay. Arms locked up. Referee decided that it was going to be a defensive free kick. That was Mr. And Brick, what a great name for a defensive player, Lindsey Brick. Yeah, yeah, she probably is the, the the one that heads up the wall. But Ole Miss still with effort, still with the desire to get this equalizer. How 
How does strategy change for both teams here the final 10 minutes? Yeah, well, Ole Miss have got to come out and, and attack, and it, it, it possibly could leave them open to another goal. But they've got no choice. They've conceded. They've defended well so far. They conceded a goal, but now they've got to change that strategy because going home one goal loser is not what Coach Mott wants. He's got to come out and fight and got to push some players forward. See if they can get the equaliser. Ole Miss did put O'Connor and McGuire back in a moment ago. Their top two goal scorers this season. Good play defensively there by Deepasula. It was. Here's Thomas again. Couldn't quite stick with it that time. Lofted towards the other side of the box. That's Huff. Huff creates some space. Let's one go from distance and it's off the post and the follow up is off the mark as well by Fusco. And we'll see that on the replay in a second but that shot may have been slightly deflected. There's the shot, possibly. Orcas had it covered though, I have to say. And there it is off the base of the post and a let off for Ole Miss. And that is not what Ole Miss head coach Matt Mott and Ole Miss fans want to see. Ashley York is down and the athletic trainer Adriana Logan coming out to check on her. I couldn't quite see what happened, but Orcus hasn't really moved, and she's been holding that left knee. Well covered. Just see the ball at the bottom left hand side of the screen on the outside of the post. Clock is stopped with 9.16. As Matt Mott and everybody on that Ole Miss bench looks on. Ashley Orcus has been such a key member in the heart and soul of this Ole Miss defense and team in so many different ways. Or whatever it was, it looks like Ashley Orcus is saying, you're not going to take me out of this game. She has played every game, every single second this season in goal for the Rebels. And she will not handle this kick. Looks like it will be Taylor Radecki. Romig will get to it. And you have to wonder, after a sequence like that, how does this Ole Miss team respond? They gave up a goal a moment ago to Jada Thomas, but then time stopped for a little bit after Ashley Orcas goes down. Orcas staying in the game. 
Yeah, they go a goal down. They start to, to try to pick themselves up from that. And then they get a knock to the keeper. And so uh, a lot of people will be thinking about that. They need to be thinking about what their job is. Hard as that may be, because they've got a job to get into Tennessee's half and search for an equaliser. So it couldn't have been much of a, a, a worse timed incident, really. Under eight minutes remaining in the second half. Back to Orcus. She'll put it to the test, and yeah, you can yeah, tell if she sends one out of touch. Just doesn't look comfortable. Not 100%. When we used to see an Orcus put that ball at least over the halfway line into the other half and uh, clearly not able to do that at the moment. Which does not relieve the pressure on the Ole Miss defence. This is Huff. Huff trying to navigate her way through all the traffic. Her shot earns a corner kick for Tennessee. This will be the 11th of the night. And you got to wonder, how does how does this change things defensively for Ole Miss? Because you're so accustomed to playing it back to Ashley Orcus and letting her kick it away. Yeah, it, uh, it disturbs the, the rhythm a little bit, doesn't it? Tennessee will try to take some time off the clock. This is George and Deepa Supel in the corner. George... We'll try to take it inside the box. And it appears that she another earns another corner, corner kick, yep. and she does. She does. Tennessee doing exactly what you do when you've got a one-goal lead, making it difficult for the opponent to get out of their own third of the field. Same strategy for the Lady Vols. Take more time off. Different result this situation. It'll be a throw win for the Rebels. As you see again, Ashley Orca's got that left knee taped. Tennessee hasn't really tested her yet since she went down. But again, right now they're trying to take as much time as possible off the clock. off of Thomas and instantly the game changes the complexion of the game changes completely and Tennessee not too interested in scoring the second at the moment here's Mo O'Connor being pursued from behind by Burdett O'Connor will send it to Stella Downing Downing has McGuire to her right cross off the mark, and this will again take time off the clock in favor of Tennessee. So you don't really see Downing and O'Connor and McGuire on the pitch on the at, the at the same, same time. time. Absolutely. Those three are on the field right now for Ole Miss. And then Coach Mott's got to throw everything he can to, to push as much up front as possible. No choice for him. Throw in for the Rebels as we approach the final four minutes. Yeah, I'm not, not blaming Tennessee for the tactics that they're putting in, but since they scored the goal, they just decided, right, we're going to kill this game off and, um, and, and just shut up shop, basically. The game seems to have really, so the competitive side of it uh, came to an end right there, almost getting their back into it a little bit. But uh, nothing serious, no challenge. Nothing that would uh, that would really 
Worry the goalkeeper. That was Lapasser who let one fly. Coming all the way up from left fullback position. That shows what Coach Mott is, is needing to do. It's like, okay, anybody can get within shooting distance. Give it a give it a go. Posser again, but what you're talking about strategy-wise, it works in favor for Tennessee so far. This is Thompson. Thompson with a left foot. What a save by Romig on the best look of the night for Ole Miss. Well, there's a sign of a good goalkeeper. They had nothing to do all night. All of a sudden, you're called into action and you deal with it. To Thompson, that was O'Connor. That was a great strike. Well played from the keeper. Second corner kick of the night for Ole Miss. On the back side. Shot deflected by Rain. Played back to Michael Ack. This guy's one in the box. Chapman Haggerty closest one to it. This is George. George has played very well. Well cut out from the passer. Ole Miss is able to track him down in the corner under two minutes to go. Lapasser. She'll try the other side of the pitch. Can Michael Ack get to it? She can't. Deepasula will burn some more time off the clock. I think that's going to be Coach Mott's complaint tonight from his team is that the effort's been there, but the, the, the passing and the, the accuracy of the passing and the weight of the passing has not been up to, up to par tonight for Ole Miss. Too many loose balls giving themselves too much to do and too much to recover from. Yeah, that's what he was alluding to at halftime. Under a minute to go in Oxford. Tennessee holding on to a 1-0 lead against Ole Miss. Tennessee has won the last four in this series. Huff angles it in the corner. Thomas will chase after it. Under 30 seconds. This will be a goal kick. And remember, Ashley Orcus banged up earlier. So Taylor Radecki, she will handle this as we approach the final 15. So Tennessee goes on the road, and the Lady Vols win 1-0 against 13th ranked Ole Miss. Big takeaways from this one? Yeah, the better team won on the night. Tennessee came. They had a good reputation that they brought with them. 